what a more person is using today in this context of this region is minimum distance between dams. So, and uh, as I said earlier, based on, it was, it, in the, I think in March, February EAC was the one that you were invited, and the minutes came in March, in which all these points were made. It is in the minutes now. So I think as a group here, and also what our workshop has been already held in Gohati, whether we can take a decision that we take the single point agenda of minimum distance between dams, uh, and because we are given the center spending basin studies, the minimum distance between dams in the case of cascading dams need to be reviewed. That was the exact sentence. And this is something which has was approved by them. Not approved, put in the minutes. We think why can't we take this up? Because it is, I mean, maybe too many things may not work. It's a single point agenda and many other things around it. Ecological criteria, the fish aspect, uh, the flow aspect. Build it so that, and build a, build a submission on it, and as many groups endorse it, as and hammering, I believe in hammering this sort of strategy. And not only that, I think even groups who are working individually and at a larger level. It, it's not something that's only dam movement I'm talking about. This is something which has got its own scientific and other aspects to it. So I think that is one uh, strategy which we can try out. And second aspect which was coming to my mind is uh, um, regarding if so there are already three or four dams already operating. Don't take too many dams. Like in Goa, what they are trying to do in the case of mining, very good work is going on in Goa. But I was telling in the morning, in the case of mining, the impacts of mining, especially on water bodies, on farming, what they are trying to do is evidence building. Because it works in NGT. So can we try out at least two or three dams of downstream, a sort of evidence building? Because according to me, communities, once they get involved and once not only communities, even departments, because many other departments suffer because of upstream dam operations. This is happening in many of the rivers, like one was earlier saying Bakra. How many dams are going to go upstream and tomorrow if these dams all get constructed, what will happen in the, to the Bakra operations? Already it is in trouble. So these are things which, uh, I mean, these departments, they don't have any connection at the state level or the central level. They want to be your, works from different and they want to be using different they don't, they are different tangents. So, can we look at uh, evidence building on those dams which have already come, those are community involvement. So, something that you strategize. So, some important indicators which can be developed. Many of us are there who have experience for working in these areas. So, develop a sort of a, a number of questions which you can ask, some indicators, ecological, social, economic. And maybe just try it out. So, that this is two points. So what, you know, my, my submission uh, to this house is that we need to sort of look at the legal question for it. That's the larger issue that we are fighting for and that, that's the ecological issue that we are looking for. So that's something that we need to uh, strongly emphasize and that's the larger goal that we are looking at. These smaller steps should lead to that. The second thing is about uh, your partial ob obstructions. You know, it, it, it's sounding like a great idea. Now, has anyone evaluated the feasibility of uh, having such. We have just, uh, we decided yesterday with Parikos Kyagi that we get together. Team team. Oh, that would be excellent because otherwise the government can immediately gun it, gun it down. So we we yeah. are on the job. Yeah. All I can say is I don't have anything to show, but we are on the job. We have taken a decision that we get together and we do work. Obviously, it's good. Something to uh, add on to some of the concerns that you raised. You know, there is a lot of uh, talk on the new, new laws coming in for the Ganga. New Ganga law is being framed by someone. Uh, yesterday, Himanshu was talking about this Ganga Commission. Minister uh, Jandhi Nandarajan also referred to this. So, what's happening on that, those fronts? You know, any idea about where the debate is? Why are these commissions and new law is coming up? What is the role of NGBR rape and, you know, in the context of, uh, in the light of new uh, commission uh, which is being set up? See, these are, I mean, there is a maze. Several things are happening, but what's happening, no one has a clue. So I think you know probably we need to put our heads together to find out you know what's really going on. Um, I don't know whether RT can reveal some information on this. I think, Flesh, I think you're being very naive. You don't know what's going on. See, I to liberate certain stretches of I am very happy with this 135 kilometer. At least that 135 kilometer is safe. Let us stick to how much of the what stretch of the river we can conserve. I think that should be the criteria we should. Say that 
we'll have one river which is free flowing for all times to come. Will not have any dams on it. Can we agree to something like that and push for it? I think in that uh, it will be very important what size of uh, river we are talking about. Because the margin has allocated a very small river, Tirthal River, uh, as a river that they will leave untouched. But in the larger scenario, if you look at uh, uh, the river basins in Madhya Pradesh, Tirthal is very small, hardly yes. anything. I mean, firstly, uh, in northeast of India, there are so many dams, so many rivers are free flowing. And every uh, uh, habitant of the valley would like every one of those rivers to be free flowing. If you want to, be, if you demand that one of them will be free flowing, the rest of them you can dam. I think there is a problem. So I don't agree with that. There is a danger there. I think we, I was talking with Prakash ji in the briefing. One of the things we, what we can do instead is that in each of the ecological zone, there should be at least one river which should be left free flowing, and that should be, you know. Not including northeast, we should say northeast should be a different policy. We need we need to identify only those dams which are to be allowed, and in how it is to be allowed, basically through a WCD kind of process. But in the rest of the India, where there is already dam basin, there we need to identify a, a, a respectable stretch of untouched river which should remain like that, or in some cases, possibly decommissioning of some of the places. Yeah. This idea of uh Having one river uh, was rather emotional <coughs> to me, uh, but you have thrown some good light on that. <coughs> and it is, you know, like, okay, we are having nothing, at least have something. It is a situation of that kind. But across, if we talk of uh, rivers across the country, there will be, you know, different merits for different rivers. And uh, uh, although I, I have a feeling that government doesn't respect science, it just respects vandalism, it respects, you know, nuisance value and all, all those kind of things. But still, it is science that we have one thing uh, which we can flag off and say, okay, because of this, this, this uh, reason for this ecoregion, this river is central to this ecoregion and therefore, Let's have this river free from the dams, but that doesn't mean that you go on building dams on all of the rivers. So I think that should be the basic idea uh, for uh, propagating this kind of theme. Eco region and northeast is a biodiversity hotspot, so it has got to. We have got to think differently. Even Western Ghats are uh, hot spots of biodiversity. So you've got to think differently for that also. Well, two years ago, uh, something new started up here, which is called the Indian Mountain Initiative, IMI. And uh, this was spearheaded by a retired Chief Secretary of Uttarakhand, uh, uh, Dr. Alex Tolia. And uh, he's kind of gone into activist mode ever since he retired. And, uh, He's been bringing together organizations, international organizations, including the ACMOD and various other organizations. And uh, he's trying to put together this, this consortium of 13 Indian Himalayan states. And the first MA, uh, major MA meeting was held last year at Edison. And uh, the whole aim and objective of the MA is to impact policy. And he is building it as a platform to impact policy, mainly in natural resources, uh, forests, and various other issues. Um, nobody ever, I mean, I went for the first meeting. The last meeting was held last month in uh, Sikkim and uh, Gangtok. And that was also, uh, I believe, a well attended meeting. He has the cloud, he pulled in a lot of. Uh, ministers and a lot of government people from across. The next evening meeting is to be held next year at Nagaland. They've already uh, put in their bid for it. So it's a high level policy kind of uh, intervention. He's, he's actually trying to get it recognized by the, the central government so that whatever they put forward to them are formally taken on record in some sense or another. A number of people who are listening to them are on the planning commission, etc. 
etc., etc., state level and central level. So that might be one of the forums which could be uh, included. I can, you know, involve anybody who wants to on the network that they have. There are a lot of policy level discussions going on in there, so uh, I don't think too many people in the regular NGO crowd on the ground actually read too much of what is happening, but they are into quite a lot. And maybe that would be a good forum for us to try and present some of this stuff and see uh, if it could be taken forward by them as well. Or maybe that could be one of the ways to go forward. <laughs> तो हमें बड़ा प्राउड फील होता है लेकिन इससे आगे कुछ नहीं आज जो उत्तराखंड का पढ़ा लिखा नौजवान है वो बड़े कंफ्यूजन में है कि मुझे क्या करना है क्या मुझे एच का सपोर्ट करना है मेरे पास क्या आउटलुक होना चाहिए तो एक ये कंफ्यूजन है हमें बहुत जरूरी है कि जो हमारा एजुकेशनल करिकुलम है इट हैज टू बी मोर कंटेक्चुअल अभी यहाँ पे जो पर्यावरण से जुड़ा इतिहास है जो हमारी हिस्ट्री है जो हमने आंदोलन लड़े चाहे वो गौरा देवी की बात हो या रानी गुरानी हो वो कहीं भी हमारी किताबों में नहीं है तो शायद इसलिए भी यहाँ पे लोगों का जो आउटलुक है डेवलपमेंट के लिए इट इज मोर कंफ्यूज और इसीलिए जो डेवलपर्स हैं जो पॉलिसी मेकर्स हैं दे आर कैपिटलाइजिंग ऑन इट बस इतना ही कहना है जिनको जो उत्तराखंड का अखबार नहीं पढ़ते बताना चाहता हूँ मैं इज राइट कि हम कन्फ्यूज हैं क्योंकि एक कॉलम में लिखा होता है कि जीडी अग्रवाल या हम ऐसे लोगों को यहाँ से मार लगाएंगे जो हमारे प्रदेश में डैम नहीं बनने देना चाहते उसी में कई छोटे कॉलम में होगा कि एजिटेशन चल रहा है कि हमें रिहेबिलिटेशन नहीं किया गया तो मतलब एक तरफ जनता लड़ रही है कि हमको रोजगार नहीं मिला हमको इससे रोजगार मिलेगा इसलिए डैम बनना चाहिए दूसरी तरफ जिनको रिहेबिलिटेशन नहीं मिल रहा वो लड़ रहे हैं कि हमको रिहेबिलिटेट नहीं किया जा रहा है means that issues are there and there are political forces and corporate forces which are actually confusing the public. We don't have to confuse ourselves. This is a very clear thing that Jaira Sahib has also said that this is a seismic area. If there are so many people here, you can believe that you and us are not going to be able to do anything. But in every case, Delhi and Delhi and Haryana and all of them are going to be able to do anything. The day you have to do this, you will be able to do this, you will be able to do this, जिस दिन आप ये धमकी उनको देंगे उनको समझ में आ जाएगी कि हम क्या खेल खेल रहे हैं ठीक है ना तो ये थोड़ा सा अंग्रेज की कोई बात नहीं वी हैव टू एनवायरमेंटली साफ पहले वो थे बड़े डैम फिर छोटे डैम और कभी भी लोगों के मन में दल है झुंझुन वाला सामने बोला कि स्मॉल डैम होने से मतलब ये नहीं कि कम प्रभाव होगा पर्यावरण पर यह इकोलॉजी पर ज़्यादा प्रभाव भी हो सकता है या उतने ही एरिया में बड़ा प्रभाव हो सकता है जो चीज़ है यहाँ पे अभी कि एच बनाना ही क्यों एजेंडा नहीं रहा है या बड़े डैम बनाना ही पहले से एजेंडा नहीं रहा है एजेंडा ये रहा कि हम अपने मन मस्तिष्क से अपनी सोच से बदल जाएं जो हमारी सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट हमारे जो पहले पर्यावरणवादी विकास था जो हमारा दैट वॉज इन आर रिचुअल्स जो हम हर्ब्स लेते थे या जो हमारा जो, जो, ये अपने नदी के साथ जो हमारा संबंध था आज जब कोई एच ई कंसिडर भी किया जाता है तो उसमें लोकल इंडिजीनियस नॉलेज को कहीं भी कंसिडर नहीं किया जाता है It is very much detached to the uh, detached from the knowledge of uh, local people. So, इसलिए भी कहीं ना कहीं फिर ऊपर से पंचायत हैं, they are there as a extension of uh, you know decentralisation. पर कहीं ना कहीं उसको undermine करते हैं जो हमारे बड़े-बड़े developers हैं, अपनी democracy को undermine करते हैं. तो ऐसे में within this whole context, within this whole context, ऐसा लगता है कि पता नहीं कौन सी रास्ता, कौन सा दशा दिशा इनका आगे बढ़ के जाएगा. Projects. जितने प्लान हैं उनको जस्टिफाई करने के लिए जैसे क्यूमुलेटिव इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट होना है कई सारे फैक्टर्स उसमें देखे ही नहीं जा रहे होंगे क्या ये मेथडोलॉजी है या जो टर्म्स ऑफ प्रेफरेंस इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट क्यूमुलेटिव इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट के लिए दिए जा रहे हैं क्या उनको कहीं चैलेंज किया जा सकता है एक तो ये सवाल है दूसरा जो ये फॉल्टी कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस है जो बहुत सारे कॉस्ट्स को नहीं देख रहा है जिनको आज हम सब्सटैंशिएट कर सकते हैं ये दिखा करके कि एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स में कितना नुकसान हुआ है जो कि पहले फैक्टर इन नहीं किया गया था क्या कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस को टेक्नो इकोनॉमिक फिजिबिलिटी के टाइम पे चैलेंज किया जा सकता है या नहीं किया जा सकता ये दो सवाल है जो मेरे दिमाग में आ रहे हैं 
एक बार अभी ये कार्य की थी किन्नौर से वो गए थे उनसे मिलने तो वो सारी ये जो जितने भी हाइड्रो प्रोजेक्ट उनकी प्रॉब्लम बता रहे थे तो उनका कहना है कि भाई ये हाइड्रो प्रोजेक्ट का कोई निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट नहीं होता है एक बार बनते समय थोड़ा बहुत होता है उसके बाद कोई नहीं होता है इवन ई एस सी में पूरे मिनट्स में आया कि उन्होंने कहा है कि इसके कोई निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट नहीं होते जब ये चिना बेसिन का यह आया था कि हम लोग और प्रोजेक्ट तभी देंगे जब कम्यूनिटी बेसिन स्टडी होगी इसकी तो उसमें भी उन्होंने कहा कि इसका कोई निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट नहीं होता है तो ई एस सी में उन्होंने कहा कि अभी आप पंडो डैम के स्टडी करो फिर उसके बाद हम लोग डिसीजन लेंगे तो मतलब आर एस नेगी जी भी इसमें कुछ हेल्प चाहते थे कि कोई सॉलिड स्टडीज हो डैम्स की जो निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट हो जिससे कि वो उसके सामने रख पाए any of the courts in madhya pradesh it seems that uh, we have now a season of uh, cumulative impact studies coming on after satpur they plan cumulative uh, impact studies on all the basis just to justify the process that they are proposing any how to even individual projects can any give any impact hey that is there of course they they can say whatever they want to say but we got hard evidence to prove that uh, there are impact Beyond what they have seen, and, and uh, is there uh, any way we can challenge the techno-economic feasibility at uh, the level of uh, you know, uh, central electricity authority much before the uh, EIA process begins? Is that possible? I mean, substantiating it with the impacts that have already happened in the projects uh, that have been built. I mean, generally, there is nothing to stop anyone from going to court. We are seeing that CIAs and basin studies and EIAs are being done. And there will be, uh, I mean, we will uh, challenge something in the NGT, but it will still be happening the same way that they are happening till now. New times will come up, the same consultants, they do the same job. So, and we've been talking about EIA consultants, we've been... Uh, Sending submissions and writing for a long, long time, blocking this now. We've been still doing it. Nothing is happening on that front. And we are saying that instead of one agency doing something like a basin study, for which you need varied expertise, you know, there has to be a people's participation. There has to be a multidisciplinary team. Maybe AI consultants or maybe whoever, but a, a sort of a multidisciplinary team. How do we go towards that? And we are teaching tenants. Uh, I think what you said about you know or what was discussed. Maybe if we go before a court and then the issue comes out, perhaps over there it could materialize. You know what this is. One of the things which some of us have been asking at the ministry is saying that the TOs of Hesin and CIA. You put them in the public domain and let people comment on them before you finalize that. But the EAC is not listening to that. Because we said that there is more experience outside of the EACs also. Uh, unless now, I think probably the time has come to take these issues before the judicial body. And perhaps that's where the ministry will listen. Whether public hearing or I mean this uh, panels, some places you know they have recommended basin studies. And public hearing has made a recommendation. I know it from our own experience. They are very clear. I mean, there are certain things which the public hearing recommendations don't have any reality. But I think this sort of uh, taking a lot of evidences where building a case for the basin studies are important. It has been recommended because public hearing is part of the process. I mean, some sort of reason, I'm not agreeing with him, the Himalayan region, but in their country, so many public hearings, I mean, we don't know, so somebody should be keeping track of it, but there have been certain good uh, recommendations coming out of such processes even, which can be used against them. We have an organization here in Dehradun, and uh, while all that you said, we know that is, I mean, I'm following on this to some extent, so I realize that these are things that need to be done, and this is definitely the way to go and all that. But we are not directly linked to either this work in one sense. Or. So 
how are you looking at taking it forward here? Do you have any suggestions? You've done this in the Northeast, you've done it in other places. So how do you want this to go forward here? There are different kinds of organizations. I would categorize them. There are certain organizations which would go with you wholeheartedly. I'm being very blunt about this. Because the CA going into a legal issue, going against dams, there are several NGOs who would not take that stand, who would not want to take that stand. You know, because that's a stand which you take and which then you have to hold that flag up. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort to be able to do that. And it needs personal commitment, which I would very frankly tell you that in our organization as well, we, there are certain reasons why we might not want to, you know, take the flag and say, okay, we are going to be doing it legally. We, we probably will not. On the other hand, the scientific aspects of this that uh, you've been discussing all morning and the various other issues, we would wholeheartedly support any kind of work in that direction. Uh, going to the people, awareness. These are issues I think a lot of our partners would be more than happy to work on and collaborate with. So I don't know, maybe you could, uh, you must have done this before, categorize and help us think about how we would like to take forward the various partners that we have and uh, the organizations that are here academically. I mean, this was something Ravi had mentioned outside, maybe, you know, awareness raising. He mentioned, uh, I think, going to, like, there were people here from different institutes from Dehradun and uh, who were very interested in what's happening but have no idea. Now, going to the, there are several engineering institutions which have come up around Dehradun. There are schools, there are colleges, it's, in, it's, it's all institutions. So, you know, I, I don't know, published material, documents, uh, publications, people going and talking. Yeah. Some kind of a program. I think Lata also raised this point and Ritri always raises this point and I think it's very critical. That's evidence building. If you don't, if you're trying to oppose one dam or a casket or whatever, what is the evidence that you have from your region that the impacts have been so bad? Now, you've been working with, uh, uh, your organization has been working with Gharats and Flood Mills. Uh, uh, there was some called Ramesh Vanili who has been working on cools and irrigation channels which are getting dried up because of dams. There was someone who said uh, that uh, dams are not releasing the 15% thing that they claim that they are releasing. So uh, this sort of evidence building between groups of Uttarakhand will also probably help tremendously to get the issue forward because I mean uh, someone said going to this, going to the community, uh, no community, uh, yeah, taking it from the community something. I think it's just the opposite, you know, their communities actually know what their impacts are and we really need to go there and know what their side of the story is, put it together and give it a sort of a wider audience and only groups from Uttara can do it. We can probably definitely pay the quarter or whatever that road is, but this sort of evidence building comes from, and there is, a, 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 even in this small group, there is so much of expertise in a number of things, like your organization of like Prakashi working on fish, and also, there are a number of individuals also working on fish, and different things. So, you know, this sort of evidence will WI has done, you know, in, in a way a very limited job of working with terrestrial and aquatic ecology. So even if the groups from Uttarakhand take a look at that report of your state made by an institution based in Nehra that can be a sort of step forward. They have been given this job job for that reason, nothing else. Not because they have the expertise. In fact they came to us for many things. So it doesn't matter whether they are here or not. They may be here or support some of the issues. Initially said was there would be a set of organizations which, which would not actually actively want to do evidence building. We, they might be evidence which we can collect if it is out there for a certain thing. But that whole thing. Actually, I think there are. It's a It's a slightly different. Suppose I do in this because because the community knows. Um, better what is actually happening. In, instead of giving them the evidence, we can take evidence from them. Like for example, this village is called Chai in Chamon districts in which this Vishnu project being built by JP group whose, whose owner has won the Padmashi award. They have created massive devastation. They have made the people of Chai as refugees they are living, they are living in, living in railway reservation center in Chuchimut and boom, most of the homes have been, have been destroyed by the relentless blasting and all. They have been going on blasting and they have been creating a lot of blast. So they are living in caves and they are living in refugee centers 
and they have not been reseated. Forget about rehabilitation. They have not been reseated. So they know better what actually is, is the uh, bad impacts of that, that project. Instead of telling them the evidence, you can collect evidence and case studies like from them. Chinese is the shining example. I have written about the Chinese story myself in Civil Society magazine. I have been there in South the South Pacific situation. At least 27 households of that village are living in reservation shelter in Jushimat. The entire village has been devastated by Vishnu Project by JP group. So I support you in that case. You can go to the community, community collect evidence from them, and then show look what is happening. Same thing is happening. Same thing is happening in Faranda, where the people have been arrested and put in jail because they've been opposing the project for such a long time. So that's what I wanted to say. Being local group, if you present the evidence, you say you approach some other people and say, look, we've done our bit. We can't go beyond this. Okay? Can you use this for something else? And go ahead. I think there are it's very easily possible because I'm telling you again from a personal experience. Right now, you know, there's a ship every rock which is uh, off the coast of Bombay. There's a huge oil spill, ground, ground, etc. Somebody built all the evidence, not a Bombay-based person, approached me and said, look, we need somebody to sign the petition. Will you sign it? I said, okay. I have nothing to do with it. I don't know anything about it. But, so my thing is that we can always find someone to file a case or fight it. Evidence making should not stop because one doesn't want to go to the legal step. That's, that's the only part of the job. We have done this already successfully. It has been used not only for storing dams, also used for other creative purposes. So for example, the survival operations management strategy, which we have developed there, same strategy was used, where downstream irrigation, uh, how it is impacted because of the flow problems. It was an evidence building process, which was used and taken back for convincing the departments. And so this is something which, but we should be strategic in how we involve at different levels all these different types of uh, river communities in this. But I think it is worth trying of different organizations. I mean, the same thing I was trying to say. It's like a value building for a, a stream or whatever it is. And even if you do not call it evidence building, call some other name. But you can set a process by which people can come together for the sake of a river, that's all. You could begin with an experience sharing exercise. Some of the partners have not been exposed to such uh, issues before. And, uh, you know, having them interact. The politicians one day, they gave a statement that it is very important to take away all the sand and all the stones because if it is there then it will create a havoc flood. If it is there it will create a havoc flood. So if we take it away then there will be no flood. So I think if we have some evidence that if it is not there then we will have flood, I am sure we can you know put something, uh, uh, put a strong case before them that if we remove there is more serious erosion and other problems are there. So I think we we need to have awareness on these kind of uh, campaigns. Newspapers are a huge uh, draw. So from a commonwealth, maybe if you could, if you had uh, articles which we could translate and publish on a regular basis, you know, once a week or something for six months, one article after another, just a kind of constant barrage of articles of the same section, mm -hmm. it would have like, mm -hmm. something like that, you know, would uh, to some extent. It was a great experience for me. Thank you all. Now we come to the end of our discussion for today's workshop. So I'm sure that today's deliberation will help the uh, policy ministry in an alignment uh, towards the restoring the flows. But the bigger question is that can we help all return its flow back or its soul? But I'm sure as a group we can. So now I would like to thank everybody for joining in for this workshop. Special thanks to 
I mean, most of other people have disappeared, but a special thank you to Dr. Chopra, Dr. Lata, uh, Suresh Bhai, Himachu Thakkar, and Mr. Bharat Chanjunwala, Sameer Mehta, and Dr. Sir, Mr. Jayal, and uh, all of our other associate organization, including Professor Nautial, and uh, thank you for Sari for arranging all things uh, for this workshop and his team. Now I'd like to end for my four very small line towards the river, which I have jotted on the morning only. It's in Sanskrit, but I'll be quoting Hindi also. Punya Salila Matra Tulya Nadia Moksha Daini Bhu Abhushna Sasya Salini Jagat Kalyanini Paradashi Satat Prabhaini नदियां सदैव भी पवित्र है मोक्ष प्रदान करने वाली रही हैं ये नदियां धरती को हरा भरा करती भी उसकी शोभा बढ़ाती हैं संसार का कल्याण करने वाली हैं ये हमेशा बहती रही कभी विलुप्त ना हो इसी परिकल्पना के साथ हम इस वर्कशॉप को आज यहां पे आगे की प्रोसीडिंग्स में क्लोज करते हैं आप सभी इस वर्कशॉप में आए आपका बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद